On today's show, Kia announces plans for an all-new hybrid SUV, automakers are setting production records in North America, and Jaguar's CX-75 supercar made its first public debut in London over the weekend. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for November 16th of 2015. Back in 2007, the Detroit 3 built 6.4 million vehicles in the United States. Then came the Great Recession and the bottom fell out of the market. Today the new car market has completely recovered and this year the Detroit 3 will once again build 6.4 million vehicles in the United States. But here's an astonishing statistic. GM, Ford and FCA closed 19 assembly plants since 2007. That does not include stamping plants, the engine plants, or the transmission plants that were also closed. And yet they're producing the same number of vehicles that they did back then. You can look at these numbers two ways. For one, they show how competitive the Detroit 3 have become. For another, it shows just how bad they were. And in yet another sign that the North American auto industry has completely recovered, plants in the U.S. Canada and Mexico produced over 1.62 million light-duty vehicles in October. According to Ward's Auto, that's the biggest volume for the month since it's been keeping track. Light trucks led the way with nearly 1 million units, which is a record for any month and 3.7% more than last month, the previous record holder. So far this year, production is up nearly 3% compared to 2014. And still to come, Jaguar is reproducing body panels for one of its classic cars. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Can you imagine how much better classic cars would be if they could benefit from today's manufacturing processes? With that in mind, Jaguar is using state-of-the-art technology and new car manufacturing techniques to reproduce a complete set of body panels for the Series 1 E-Type and selected parts for the Series 2 and 3. It 3D scanned the body shell of an original Roadster and Coupe and then transferred that into CAD, so the panels should fit just right. It's a cool move for a vehicle that is regarded as one of the most beautiful designs of all time, but is also notorious for its rust issues. The panels have been added to Jaguar's Heritage Parts catalog and can be ordered through the automaker's global sales network. And in other Jaguar news, its hybrid supercar concept that is driven by the villain in the new James Bond movie Spectre made its first public debut over the weekend. The CX-75 was driven by the movie's stunt driver in an annual parade through central London. Just in case you haven't seen the movie or weren't in London over the weekend and still want to see the car in action, Jaguar released a video of Formula One driver Felipe Massa getting some time behind the wheel of the supercar. And it sure looked like he had some great fun. Coming up next, Kia reveals ambitious plans to boost its average fuel economy by the end of the decade. True love will find you in the end. Hi, Dad. When you're committed to the job, but don't give up and your tires can't be weak in the knees. Love will find I don't go. In the end. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Kia is putting greater emphasis on developing environmentally friendly vehicles. The company announced that by 2020, it will boost its green lineup to 11 models from the four it has today. Its lineup will include hybrids, 
plug-in hybrids, pure EVs, and fuel cell vehicles. One of the first models is a plug-in hybrid version of the Optima, which goes on sale next year. Powering the car is a 2-liter 4-cylinder that's mated to a 6-speed automatic. It's also got a lithium-ion battery and a 50-kilowatt electric motor that helps deliver 27 miles of electric power only. Kia also revealed that it's coming out with an all-new hybrid SUV called the Nero. The vehicle has been developed as a hybrid from the ground up and features a unique platform from the company's existing models. It's powered by a 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine with a lithium-ion battery, a 32-kilowatt electric motor, and a six-speed dual-clutch transmission. A plug-in version will be offered in the future. The Nero will be revealed next year, with production kicking off late next year as well. With its new green models, Kia hopes to improve the average fuel economy of its lineup 25%, by 2020. And in other Kia news, the company announced it will offer semi-autonomous features for its vehicles by 2020 and is investing $2 billion over the next couple of years to develop the technology. The company also said it's aiming to have a fully autonomous vehicle for sale by 2030. Obviously, Kia isn't as bullish as other automakers who say they will have self-driving technology available by the end of the decade. That wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.